Hey, CPA Guy family. Welcome to the voice of our micro and small business community. I do need to come up with a better name than the micro small <laughs> business community. So if y'all have any suggestions, please let us know. Um, CPA Guy here. I just want to say thank you to all of y'all for coming out here, taking time out of your busy day. I know how extremely busy it is to be a micro small business entrepreneur. But I also know how important it is to share these stories, right? And so a lot of, of in our experiences and the people that have reached out to us and the people that we go and seek out, they have the same story, right? And I think it's really important to be able to share some of these things and not just, you know, the success stories that we see from rags to riches, but really the journey. And so I do want to take a minute right now and just kind of go around the room a little bit and allow everybody to kind of introduce yourself, tell us about your business, um, and then we'll get started. Yes, I'm first up. Um, my name is Kiki Viral. I own Painting the Hills. Um, I started off with wall painting, but have found our niche with uh, cabinet refinishing and accent walls, um, board and batten, chip lap, um, those kinds of products. Um, it has. It started off as a, a side kind of hustle. Um, I was doing it on the weekends when my husband was home to take the kids. Um, it has since grown to where we are working every weekend, wow. and now um, he is coming off of active duty orders and going to be joining me full time. Mm -hmm. So kids are now in school, and we get to work Yay. Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so we get two days off a week now. Um, so we're really excited and growing, and can't wait to see what else what else it holds for us. Cool. Um, I'm Janelle. I own the Well Clothing. Um, it's an online clothing boutique. I've been doing it for, gosh, I'm in my sixth year. Wow. So that's fun. Um, I started off as a, well, I'm still a stay-at-home mm -hmm. mom, but <laughs> I started doing this um, because I knew I worked retail in college, and I knew I wanted to um, continue to do retail. I love retail. I love being with people. I love picking out clothes for people. Mm -hmm. I love the experience people get when they're putting on an outfit, and they love it, and they feel good about mm -hmm. themselves. Um so I've been doing it online and just do pop-ups here and there. Um, and I have three boys, so obviously this is my only girly outlet. Mm. So that's kind of fun. Um, and yeah, it's just been growing and growing. I'm now currently trying to find a space. I'm trying to build a team. There's just a lot of stuff that's definitely involved in that. But um, it's been a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. And let me just say, I love how you, you said, you know, I'm still a stay-at-home mom. I think a yeah. lot of times people want to, to say, well, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a CEO, and we're, we're kind of, you know, dividing sure. those, those, those areas, and we're not, right? We're still parents, we're still husbands, yep. you know, we're still mothers, you know, we're still, you know, sisters and brothers and yep. those things as well, and we're that too as well too, so thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Tara Hardiman, the creator of the Carmel Soap Company. Uh, we were established in 2016. Uh, out of uh, pure disgust and <laughs> uh, with the beauty and skincare and body care industry. Um, I purchased a big name body wash and I opened it and it smelled like window cleaner. Um, and I did what we never do. I turned the label around and I didn't understand any of it. And it became an obsession. I did all kinds of um, research and studying what is what are these ingredients what does the skin need and it unfolded into what is now the carmel soap company so now we create everything from scratch with plant-based ingredients everything is handmade and it, we we really do oper operate with integrity that's super important to us so we educate people and we communicate we provide excellent customer service and we let people know that you can have simple luxurious things that are made by hand honestly and pure so that's what we do i'm a mom i'm a wife <laughs> you know so i am super busy and i love it I are you have strictly it online or so we started on just vendors right we did a whole bunch of vendor events and things like that and then as we grew we moved into a space right so we had a shared space mm -hmm. and then COVID happened and then it was it, it happened just at the right time though because i was still i was feeling like maybe this isn't for me, maybe this isn't the right space, maybe this isn't the right partnership, the one that I was in at the time. Do I want to do retail? Is this where we need to be? And right. then COVID happened. Right. And it was just the, the perfect timing for me to be able to take a step back, go back to my home workshop, and now we've been there about a year and a half, and now I'm thinking, okay, 
what do I want to do now? So now it's online, but we do gonna vendor events. <laughs> We're going to make this happen. But I know we need to be yeah. face, right? We have the kind of stuff that people want to feel, people want to smell. Yeah. So we do, we do know that we need to be face forward. And yeah. so we do a vendor event every now and then. And we are open to a space, the right space at the right, right time, sure. you know. So, but for right now, we're online and at events. So, so you know, you said something that I think is is impacted everybody, right? Which is the pandemic, it's COVID. People have had to shift. Some people more than others. You know, us. It actually kind of helped us because we were already virtual, mm -hmm. and so we did have some pushback early on. We needed to have, you know a space, right? They wanted to see us, you know, they didn't feel comfortable being virtual, right? So we had created a website because an online presence mm -hmm. meant that we were, we were real, we right. existed. <laughs> um, but that, and, and coupled with the education is kind of why we're here, right? Is that we want to try to cover three topics today. And I know there's so many topics around business. Um, but for us, we've been out in the community for the last year, right? And we've talked to a lot of different people, some of our, our clients and some of them aren't our clients, right? We're just going out there as community advocates, trying to get in front of some of this common questions that we get all the time and the same struggles. And so we put this together so that we could just hear from those that are doing it, those that are doing it well, right? Those that are, you know, working towards, you know, growing that brand and that space and what those next steps are. And, you know, so for us, the three areas that we have experienced with people struggling the most, social media, accounting and taxes, <laughs> and the support system. And I don't think we talk about that one enough. And so I, I want to start off with the social media. Um, when we started, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of presence. We did get on Facebook with the Robert Garcia CPA PLLC. Like that's our company and people don't really know us by that. Um, and then, you know, a few, you know, I think three or four years ago, you know, we were coming up with something and Lily came up with the, I have a CPA guy. And it was kind of quirky because um, we had wanted to be professional. We wanted to have the bold colors. We wanted people to really, you know, equate us with all of these other mid middle-sized firms, right? These, you know, the, the sense of authority. And it just wasn't the clientele that we were working with, right? We were working with your everyday entrepreneur. We were working with your, you know, stay-at-home mom, right? Or the person that had the side hustle, they have a vision, but they're having to struggle with work and do things parallel like we did for seven years. Um, and so our social media presence has, has continued to grow, albeit slow. However, it, it, accounting and taxes is just <laughs> such a hard topic to try to gain interest in, even though it's everybody needs it and wants it when they yes. need it. Um, but I'd just like to just go around the room and just kind of share a little bit, like, just talk to us a little bit about what platforms are you are on, you know, which ones are you not on, you know, which ones have you struggled with, had the most success with, you know, just, you know, your experience with social media and, and how it may have helped you or not helped you. So mine started with Facebook and strictly Facebook. Um, I also figured out, I have no idea how I figured it out, but <laughs> how does it do a website? Because um, in my, as my husband said, you're, you know, you're nobody if you don't have a website. So I was like, okay, I, gotta, I, I have to that's find out. That's funny because I don't think that's I, the case anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think it is either, but that's his right. mentality and where he comes from. Um, so I figured out how to make a website and I figured out how to do an email address and like I started from scratch Like I had to Google and YouTube mm -hmm. everything to figure it out um, How to start a business um, So Facebook was where I started um, After I got my LLC um, and it started off with just painting um, I saw this one Request from somebody on Facebook that said we want to do an accent wall. This is what we're looking for so I messaged the person and we did it very, very cheap um, because we wanted to get a portfolio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, mean, sure. I mean, we definitely did not make any money on that wall, <laughs> but that wall got an interior designer yes. who saw us and now I do all of her work. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to say though, I do want to say for the audience because I, we hear this all the time, right? We, we need we feel like we need to discount or cheapen some of the things and and I think that there's a, a time and a place for that mm -hmm. so I just want to be clear mm -hmm. right no matter what it is that you decide to do be comfortable with what you're needing to do and who you are with what you can but there yes there's always a time where you can say hey I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to you at cost or I'm just gonna give right. you my time because I can't you yeah. know what I mean but be very intentional yeah. with your business and not simply doing things for free because you will set that expectation mm -hmm. as those referrals go right. along right. the way. Yeah. I mean, in a way that was like a marketing. Right. It, it, is and exactly, it, it worked it for you. It, yeah. it worked. And my husband, like after we did it, he's like, come on, how are we going to get some more walls? We want to do this more. Right. And through reposting it. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, I got 
seen on Facebook by another interior designer, and she's like, I need a go-to person. Yeah. And like that relationship um, has just flourished. Mm -hmm. So because of that, she's big on Instagram. So I did start an Instagram. I'm not very good with it yet, and I don't have a lot of followers. Most of the followers I've gotten are people that follow her, who started following me because of her. That's great. <laughs> That's cool. yeah. But yeah. they can start following me. So you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do have an Instagram, still learning that platform. I tried Nextdoor, but I got nowhere. Like I created the account and I didn't get anywhere. And I'm not even sure anybody in my neighborhood uses it. So it wasn't a good fit for me. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other social media stuff that I've done, mostly just the Facebook. Yeah. Um, I also joined every mom's group mm -hmm. and page that mm -hmm. I could find. And once or twice a week, they have a day that you can post your business. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has been huge for me. And that's where I've gotten a lot of my clientele that hasn't come out of referrals from the designers or other things, um, has been posting on there. Um, and I think a lot of, I mean, that's where I go when I need something. I go search those mom pages to see who's the most recommended because people put it there. Yep. Um, I think understanding what the, each platform does, right? right? And I think, you know, we're still learning. We're still figuring it out, right? We're on Facebook and Instagram. That's it. Like we talked about TikTok. I attended a small business TikTok sort of launch party, you know, and kind of <laughs> they, they, they shared with us stats. They shared with us things like, 50% of the TikTok users are not on other platforms, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's just like, right. So you also have to just understand, like, do I need to post on these mom groups more often? Is that really my platform? And so that you can gain that following is Instagram really the place for you or not for you. Right. And I think those are all hard questions, but you know, having different, <laughs> you know, perspectives here, right. Help, right. It helps to really understand yeah. what we should be doing and kind of what works for different niches and just opening up sort of those, those groups and those opportunities to have those discussions. The groups on Facebook, well, we were talking about earlier, she was like, well, Instagram might not be your ideal client. Yes. The Facebook groups works for me because it also targets the neighborhoods. Right. So anybody in the Stone Oak or the moms group are within those areas. Yes. And so I'm not advertising to all of San Antonio right. on a military spouse page. Right. Um, so I, I was doing that at first, but then I was getting requests that were hour and a half, two hours away, and I was like, I don't want to do that. Right. So I've honed to the groups that are in the areas that I want to work, yeah. um, and not just wide general for sure. stuff yeah. that I don't want to do. I'm, I'm, I keep I keep thinking Pinterest for you. I actually I was just going to say that Pinterest, I Pinterest haven't. Keeps coming up. They have a business That's, platform, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't figured that out, but I was actually just thinking that that yeah. might be a good place to go, because. Yeah. Um, What's interesting is that a lot of the work we do is Pinteresty, and yeah. people get their inspiration yeah. pictures yes. that we do from Pinterest. Just yes. might get people who may not be in your area, right? right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it still gets your name out there. Your 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 plot or your business is very visual, right? Yeah. So yes, Facebook is really good for communicating, but Instagram, Pinterest, those are all visual yep. pictures, images, video content. Yep. Those are all going to be those kinds of. Uh, you know, platforms that you're going to want to use. But Facebook, I feel like, is... It's been the best for me. Yeah. And it for, has grown yeah, exponentially sure. so, that so way. So you can't tell, right? Janelle's our, our resident <laughs> social media expert. <laughs> I am not. I can talk for hours about social media. It, it actually is a... It's one of those things that I, I hate love relationships yeah. with social media. I wish I didn't have social media. Let's just say that. It becomes a... But that, not about me. Go ahead. Keep finishing. <laughs> Actually, I think it's time to go. Oh, and make okay. it about you. Well, okay. So I could talk, literally talk for hours about social media. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I am on Facebook, but uh, not really. I'll tell you that in a second. Um, I'm on Pinterest. I tried TikTok. I just went ahead and just <laughs> cut that right out. Um I don't have time to invest yeah. in that. And one thing I do listen to have a lot of podcasts, a lot of business podcasts. And one thing they that they had said to me, or not me specifically, <laughs> but that uh, was a good piece of advice was don't try to master every single piece of social media. Mm -hmm. right. It's just not possible right. unless you're going to hire someone. Unless for you have that. a team, unless you have a team yes. or you're outsourcing it out, yes. then yeah, because that's the same thing with us. We've yes. talked about having just a dedicated day if we're going to run and do videos, yep. right? You yep. know, and just change shirts or yep. something. Yeah. You know yep. what I mean? Because yep. 
every day your energy is not the same, exactly. right? And everybody's like, yeah. you look at the video and you're like, that's amazing. And you yeah. see three people's <laughs> videos and you're like, oh yeah. my God, like look at, they're taking the perfect picture at the perfect time. And you're like, that was probably six weeks ago yeah. and they had it all <laughs> yeah. set up and they, it took them this long to edit it. And, and we feel like we need that now, yes, right? Because that instant gratification. Right. You're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. It wasn't a now. It, it was, it was a photo shoot. It was, yeah. it was a setup, yeah. and yeah. like, and that's okay. So yeah. So I do um, just a little background. I have been doing everything myself since March of this past year. I hired my first employee in March, and she does now all this stuff that I didn't realize I didn't mm-hmm. like doing: <laughs> mm-hmm. the shipping, the tagging, the steaming, all of that stuff, so that it can free me up to be more creative in that. Know, the Instagram, the yeah. all of that stuff. So I do all of my Instagram. I'm getting, I'm now getting to the point of not wanting to do it as much anymore. Um, not because um, it takes a lot of my time. It's more of the creative part. It's it, it it doesn't fulfill me. It's not my. I don't enjoy it as much as I used to. And I think it honestly is because my kids are getting older. I want to be a part of you know mm-hmm. their stuff, and it's taking a lot of time. I have to research what's trending right now. What's everyone doing? What what do I need to keep up with? And it's exhausting. So that is probably one thing maybe eventually I'll, you know, give down to somebody else. But um, Instagram has been my number one. Um, and I think that's because that's the age group that I sell to. So anywhere from like 25 to 40 is really my age group. I mean, I sell to people who are younger than that. And I sell to people who are older than that, for sure. But that's definitely it's my favorite. say, hey, audience. I'm 45. Like, <laughs> no, my, my mom is one of my best customers and she's 60. So, uh, you know, it's, it's. But my main target audience, my, the, the bulk mm-hmm. of the people that buy from me are in that age group. And I would say probably like 80% of them are on Instagram. Yeah. They're not on Facebook. However, I started putting a little bit more time into Facebook because I started realizing, you know, there are a lot of people like my mom or in that little um, that Dem- age. Dem- demographic. Yes, the demographic mm-hmm. that I'm, I'm missing out on that they don't want to create an Instagram. They don't right. want to create a TikTok. They don't want to create... They have a Facebook, that's all they're going to do, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and they are the ones probably with more money than the stay-at-home mm-hmm. moms. Um, I mean, some, I'm not saying that's how it is for everyone, but um, so I've kind of been trickling in all of them, but I would say Instagram for sure has been my number one. Um, and the way that um, I've kind of tried to really grow it, I will say from the last, it's probably been two years that I really honed in on the branding of my um, Instagram. So Facebook, you can post all you want, and it doesn't matter. Instagram, you have, it's like a, it's a grid, right? So it's like an image of this is what their brand is. And every post has to be um, specifically posted so that you have this look. Pinterest, again, you don't yeah, really have like to. Yeah, it's like tiles, right? So you, you, you're not, not only seeing the overall profile, but then you go into it as well, right. and so you're getting a little bit deeper into it. So when the... you go to that person's page, you're not going to just see one picture, right? You're going to see their mm-hmm. logo. You're going to see their co- little bit of content right there. You're going to see their tiles that make up a story, based a visual branding in a, in a sense. And so to me, Instagram is kind of like my baby. It's like my... Um, this is what the well is about. This is the the look that I'm trying to, I want someone the to story. look at it in five mm-hmm. seconds go, okay, I already know exactly the style that this is. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being like, I'm very confused. What do they sell? What's going on? And so there are some times that I'll post something and go, oh, I do not like the way that looks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to delete that mm-hmm. or whatever. And maybe I think about it too much, but I'm very protective over the branding. Um, and something that's kind of helped me. Sorry, I'm going into all these different tangents. You can stop me whenever. I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to stop you, but I'll interject a couple of things. So one, I, I love hearing what you're saying. It's like I'm trying to step away from my business to work on my business. I did my business. I don't think we do that enough. And I don't yeah. think that we recognize when, the, when we take those jumps to right. do that. And I think it's important that we do. We've had this conversation a few times. And, and, and I work with the micro small business owners, so there's not always a lot of opportunity to say and do those things because you're like like us. I'm wearing the admin hat, I'm invoicing, I'm accounts payable, I also have to be the strategy mm-hmm. guy, and then I also gotta be the guy that goes in there and does the data entry, and then I, you know, and so it's hard. So I love that you're saying that, and you have to and understand when you're ready to move out, right, right. of those things. Right. The other thing I'll just share is that, you know, and you said it, right, we can't be in everything, you can't mash everything. Sometimes we don't wanna go into a, a different social media platform because it's like this 80-20 rule. I'm gonna service, 80% of my business comes from Instagram, then I'm not trying to go and capture 20% right, of them off right. Facebook because it's not Stick really worth Stick with what works. Stick with what yeah. works, keep working at it, invest your time and money, 
And then when you have, can hire somebody or whatnot, or an intern or create mm-hmm. some, you know, or outsource, then you can look at the yes. other platforms at that point and start bringing in some of those other revenues. So yes. no, no, I, I love what you're saying. And, and I think this is really, really good content for the people that are out there because social media has been a huge issue for me because every time that I see a small business, I'm like, okay, what platforms are you on? And they're like, I'm not. I'm like, well, how does anybody know? How does anybody know you? That's where we go when we validate a business. You get a referral, you go to their business page mm-hmm. and you start to see, mm-hmm. and you're like, I like what I see, I'm gonna call you, right? right? We don't go to websites anymore. I mean, we do, but it's not the same because you're on your phone and it's real quick to just go in there versus mm-hmm. typing something mm-hmm. up. And, and I don't think that there's low cost options, right? I'm an advocate for low cost options, not cheap, but options that are affordable to get people started. And I think that when people can get started in the right way, you're giving them an opportunity. Sometimes people's it, you know, revenues can grow 25, 50% simply by having that online profile yeah. and they don't have it. Or it's free. you said it best, the domain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a conversation yesterday. Sorry, I'm pointing to Lily, but we had a conversation mm-hmm. yesterday and, and the, this guy goes, and he's, he's well known, he's, he's, he's a mover and shaker in San Antonio. He's like, you know, when I get an email address that's at Gmail, he's like, oh, you're temporary. Mm-hmm. Right, and I was like, "Dang!" Yeah. <laughs> but you know, because I'm like, it's unprofessional. It's, you know, it's, it, and he's right. It's it's separate and getting a domain and saying yep. at this yep. is so much better. But people don't know how to do those things, yep. right? And so, you know, as many times as we have these conversations of like, well, how can we help? I kind of bridge <laughs> that. You know, it's hard because it's just us, and we have this long list of ideas. Okay, I have a long list of ideas. She has yep. a long list of her ideas. <laughs> um, so it's no, it's good. It's good. I definitely do want to get to the rest of the topics there, and yes. then we yes. can continue to just kind of share whatever we feel like you know is relevant for the day as well too. So, what's your experience been like? I'm old school, so it's been tough. <sighs> Okay. I didn't want to create a website. I didn't want to mm-hmm. get on social media, but I wanted everybody to know who we were and what we did and how great everything was. So like your husband, I was, okay, we need a website. Let's create this website. Oh, but I'm also super cheap. So how do we do that? <laughs> okay, so we found the GoDaddy. So yeah, we use GoDaddy and GoDaddy makes it really easy. So yeah. I'm on there almost every single day, updating something, making something. Um, then, okay, Facebook maybe eight to 10 years ago, got on Facebook, one of the later people. Um, just recently in the last couple of years, um, Instagram. You're so so <laughs> <laughs> trying so to lucky. trying to stay, you know, almost uh, in this little bubble of, I don't want social media to take yeah. over my whole life. And, you know, yeah. I have kids of all ages, so they're yeah. on their uh-huh. device. I don't want that. But I do want to share what we do, yeah. what we have, how great we are, our ingredients, all these things that we're so proud of. So. Our biggest things are Instagram and Facebook. That's where our, our, I think our core is 25 to 50 year olds, right? That's primarily who our customer is. But we do have 18 year old customers and we do have 75 year old customers. I just saw one yesterday. So we are trying to reach them all. So between the website and Instagram and um, Facebook, but we're also looking into TikTok, but I'm not about to hmm. be dancing and putting on a show. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm on LinkedIn because that's, you know, from my corporate career, I'm right. still on LinkedIn and I've updated that. And um, we're on Twitter, but I don't really tweet much of anything. Mm-hmm. So Instagram and Facebook and my website, my website is my baby, yes. right? So like Instagram and, and Facebook are for a lot of other people, my website is where I am every single day. But I'm just now, after five years in business, getting around to how does this Instagram look overall? Like yeah. all these tiles and how they're working together. Yeah. And we've just gone through, a, just in the last 60 to 90 days, a whole rebranding of how it's we want so, things to look. So pretty. I already looked at <laughs> right? it. I was because like, oh, you're, I love this. I think we get into business and we're like, I just want to get the stuff out there. I just yes. want to. You do. Right? But mm-hmm. then... Uh, I'm not even sure if the name works. Does the name right, show? Does right. it represent who I am? Does it tell people who we are? We don't. We don't think about look? those things, and that's yeah. that's that's why I love this dialogue because we don't. We don't. We go in there because we have a passion to do yeah. something, right? right? And we, then we have to come up with pricing, and then we have to make sure that it, it works. <laughs> what we're and then most of us don't count the time that yeah. we're spending in our business yeah, yeah. to actually pay ourselves, right? Because right. if we went out there and got a retail job, then what would it be, right? right? If right. we went out there to do, you know, like project management type stuff, what would it be? And we don't, right? And then that's where that's where I think a lot of times people get that fatigue, right? Or they get into those those dips, and they're like. Ah. I get started for this is so much work, right? I have social media and I have branding and I have all these other things. I I still got to deliver and I still got to put the kids (laughs) down and I still got to do all these things. 
And so it is, it is challenging, but I think with a good, you know, group and network and, you know, support system, right? So I won't jump into the support system, but I do want to jump into the whole finance and accounting with the tax side, because it, it is a relevant, relevant topic. It's not one that people really like to talk about. And I, I even tend to gloss over it at times and I need to stop because I think that I'm devaluing it even by the conversations that I have with people because I care and I love so much about just the business and the ideas and all that flowing. But it is so important. And we saw that with the pandemic, right? People couldn't get PPP loans because they didn't have financials, right? They couldn't get idle loans because they didn't have financials. They didn't have tax returns. They didn't have these things there because it was a side hustle. And now their side hustle went away. And so they had to legitimize themselves and well, well your timeline ended, right? And so part of, part of this is as small business owners, when we get started, we, we, we have to prioritize where we're spending our monies, right? We have to prioritize where our time is. And sometimes we're going to go with the cheaper option. Sometimes we're going to just do it ourselves. And sometimes we're going to, you know, go out there with somebody that was referred to us and whatnot. And we're, we're learning along the way. And we may pay for more services today or we may take away services later and kind of figure out how those things work for you. We're always of the, mm -hmm. we're the advisor, right? We're going to tell you what we feel is best for you. And then we're going to guide you on whatever works for you, right? And so sometimes it's a tiered approach. We don't say, hey, we'll do everything for you. It's the only way we work. Sorry. No, sometimes we'll get you started for six months and then we'll hand it over so that you can take care of it and then you can get into your numbers because that's what's important for us, right, is to be able to do that. So all that being said, mm -hmm. what, what has your experience been like? Did you start out working with somebody? Did you not start out working? Why? Like, what would you say to people that, you know, have this kind of conversation about mm -hmm. what should I do? <laughs> that's normal, I yes. I used to live across. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We have a quarry by an <laughs> interruption. It's a quarry that blasts on a regular basis, like 11:30. Like everyone take it. So, oh, uh, so when I started, again, I knew nothing. I but I had husband pushing me to do it the right way, um, which was all wrong way uh, when it came to financials. Um, I thought I could do it via a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet at that, um, and then at the end of the year. The first year, I was, and it was a mess. It was such a mess. Um, I didn't have any advice. I had nobody to talk to. I hadn't done my due diligence in knowing where I was going. I was just proud of myself that I had a website and an Ooh. LLC hey. to my name. That's the that, passion. That's, the passion. <laughs> that's where small wins, right? That's where it went, and that's what I was proud of until it came tax time, um, and it was a nightmare. Um, I had um, a person like a bookkeeper who'd been doing our taxes for a few years. Um, and so I kind of tried to get her to help me. And I was really frustrated because I didn't feel, I didn't feel it was a good fit anymore mm -hmm. with the business. And I didn't feel like I was getting the advice I needed. And things just didn't seem like they were jiving right. Um, so I'd been watching the mom threads and found you. <laughs> Someone recommended him. And so like, it's I probably me. I, I, me. I personally messaged this person because I, I am, I don't want to call the big firm. Yeah. I don't want to be yeah. talking to somebody who I can't relate to and who I was scared. They were going to be like, you're an idiot. You, sh you messed yeah. this up. I was scared. So I personally messaged this person and they gave you rave reviews, which is why I did contact you. Yeah. Um, and that changed everything. Um, so just before I contacted him, I attempted QuickBooks um, so that I could straighten this nightmare out. And I messed up the first time so bad that I just closed <laughs> the account, did more research, and then I tried again. And I started a whole new business again. So I have two accounts in QuickBooks mm -hmm. with the same name, one messed up and one that's working. Um, I stayed up literally all night putting every entry in, making sure that I got it right, and Googling every, how do I categorize this? Um, and then in that time period is when um, Robert brought in, um, was brought in, and he was able to look at my QuickBooks, and we found out that things weren't balancing again, and I'm like, no, it has to balance. Like, I went line by line, well, coming to find out the bookkeeper had um, went in and changed some things, which originally were in there right, and now they weren't right, and now I wasn't balancing. So he was able to quickly help me repair this without having to close the company and start it again. <laughs> um, but through this QuickBooks process, I've learned so much. I actually now, 
we, my husband and I have been doing our personal budgeting on spreadsheets for 10 years. I now have it all in QuickBooks, QuickBooks yeah. and I love it. Yeah. And I'm like, click, click, click. Oh my gosh. I don't have to transpose everything from accounts to a spreadsheet. And, and it's you're also amazing. like, hey, look how much we're going out to eat. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at that. Don't look at that. There's no hiding it now no hiding because it, it doubtless, yeah. I can't hide the transaction. So it actually gives a much better realistic picture. And I can give access to my CPA who can now pull whatever he needs yeah. at the end of the year. So I vowed I was not gonna be that stressed at tax time this year. And now this year, completely different. I'm like, bring it, I got it, I'm ready. So, it, and it, that side of it is a huge weight off my shoulders because I had no idea where I was gonna turn, who I was gonna ask, how I was gonna do it. Yeah. Um, and because we wear all those hats, yeah. um, if one of those is stressing you out mm -hmm. to the point where you can't sleep, yeah. like it makes it hard to it's a big deal to maintain it's, anything else. It's a big deal, and this is why I bring up the topic, right? Again, you know, I, I tell people like I'm not a salesperson, right? I want to advise, I want to educate, and, and I tell people we may not be a right fit. And I love that you said that because that it is it is about a fit. It is about the comfort. It is about people meeting you where you are, right, and bringing you along. And sometimes sometimes that's not me, and and that's okay. I, everybody that comes to me, I tell them, you know, if you feel like you need to talk to three or more people. Go talk to three more. Your business is what's important. My reputation and brand is what's important. So if we're not a good fit, we're not a good fit. And I've learned to say no, right? Yeah, I'm, you right. know what? You're not the right fit for me. We're just going to have to, you, yeah. you need to find somebody that is. But also understanding some of these things are complicated. Look how much more work one does trying to do it yourself, mm -hmm. you know, versus trying to connect with somebody that might be able to help you early on. You know, in, in what works for you and an affordable rate for you and a time schedule that works for you. All those things are really important to small business owners. So I do want to emphasize that. Um, I'm going to have to pass on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and keep right on going. I feel like I'm your worst person when it comes to this stuff. Um, I think literally because we used to live right across the street from you. So I think I was like, knock, knock. Where can I start in my yeah. business? I'm going to need your help. I will say I, I did feel comfortable enough to do my own quarterly taxes. So I felt I have inventory, so I knew right off the bat, and I'm not a service, so I, I was going to have to, the taxes were going to have to be reported. And, but, oh, man, it's been a fun mm -hmm. couple of years. Um, if, let's just say if I didn't have Robert, I think I would not be in business right now <laughs> because I am every time, like, around December, I'm like, uh it's mm -hmm. coming. I'm calling, her November, I'm calling her November now, right? Because I'm like, hey, I, yeah, he I just like, logged in your books and like, you, <laughs> you still got some things open. I, you know. He's like, taxes are coming up in about 10 months. You're going to need to start working on it. Um, no, but in all honesty, I mean, it's been a 180, I feel like. I mean, there have been some uh-ohs on my end that I accidentally canceled my online QuickBooks and <laughs> I wasn't, so I had to do the whole like, Line by line, <laughs> almost, I think almost every year I've had to do the one by one, line by yeah. line. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> luckily, um, after last year, I feel like we finally got a good um, head on our shoulders, but QuickBooks was huge doing, and then also you educating me and telling me like, you're going to want to do online QuickBooks and not, you know, it, it's different for everybody, right? It's different for everybody. So it was just really helpful. I mean, it was like eight. I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I can't believe <laughs> I've been stressing about this this whole time. Um, and then also last year, or was it last year? The year before was so huge seeing the categories. Um, and he's like, so this is how much you're paying for office supplies. Yeah, you're going to need to bring that down. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I probably should get some more categories there. So just helping me understand. And I, and I joke about this all the time because I have a lot of, I'm in a lot of like little small business groups and I'm like, oh, you need to have Robert do your CPA. You need to have, I have the best CPA guy. You need to use him. I was like, just so you know, he's going to educate you a lot. <laughs> so if you're not into that, like if you don't want to know everything going on in your business, you better get out. Like this is. That's my next, ha next hashtag, right? A CPA guy going to educate you <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, I feel like I'm in college again. Like really like in accounting class, like it's very informative. So that's, been really really helpful um not that i grasp everything that you say because your terms are <laughs> just like what no you know but, but it's good to it's it's honestly as a business owner i need to understand 
those things, even if I don't want to learn <laughs> about that. Everybody's stuff. different though. Everybody's yeah. different. And I'll tell you like with your journey and the things like you've, you've, you, you know, every year is a progression. Mm-hmm. And, right. and again, people have to get into their business, right? There's no, there's no grading system here, right? There's no pass or fail. I started my business. I'm doing this. Like that's where I got to focus on. The money was coming in. Your branding was there. Your followers were there. Mm-hmm. We could take care of it. We did, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody's knocking on your door. You're not. Yeah. You're not behind <laughs> anything. No. You're taking care of it. And 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 as we go along, and I think this is where where we show up. Probably one of the best is that we know where you are, right? You're here. You're here. You're here, right? And we we have those conversations with you as you're there. And then we also say, okay, now you're ready to talk about where we need to break down office supplies to break that down a little bit more, yeah. right? Now we're ready to have these conversations so that you can understand what your numbers represent before it's too many things, right? right? We're talking about 10 or 15 accounts and we're like, look, I just, yeah. just get it done and we can, we can yeah. t- talk next time. And I think that's really, really what's important, right? Is making again, it's the right fit and making sure that at what points you need what information, right? That can really help you kind of get there and that it's okay. Ideally we want people to start their business, work with the CPA, right? Get these things going, educate them so that you don't have some of these <laughs> issues. It's not, we're not in a perfect world though. Yeah. You know, there's a ton of resources that exist that people still don't know, but we do want to be, let people know that it is okay if you go out there and you start your business and, and, and these are things that you're trying to work through because CPAs, we can still come in and clean it up and fix it yeah. for you and get you going on the right path at that point too. And just a little plug, I mean, he didn't tell me to say this, but <laughs> just like with QuickBooks, like when I first was on it, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to have to watch all these YouTube videos and figure out tutorials and I don't Google. have time for that. And it's just like... And it was so nice that, I mean, we would schedule, I don't know if you're doing that anymore for people, but <laughs> back in the day, we would schedule like a little session, like, hey, I got 30 minutes, I can teach you how to do this real quick so that you can take that under your roof and do it on your own. And it was so nice because sometimes I just don't even know where to start. I don't even know where yeah. to like, what do I even research how to do this? Like, it's another world and I know you're in it, <laughs> but you're doing it, you're just amazing I, I, I still schedule those okay. um <laughs> but, but a little bit less though because you, you have a family you, you start to see so i've always been a reactive business right i've right. been i've been running my career with corporate america parallel for seven years right and a lot of people it worked they didn't know that right i was a high performer i oh, it was yeah, well yeah. you know thought of and I, I did well but i was running two things among other things among being a dad and everything mm-hmm. else and so you know, was, but I was always like, I just, I love helping people. Now that we're in it, we're like, well, what's, what revenue is coming in? Yeah. How, where are we spending our time? What do we need to do different? But how can we still meet people that way? Like, how can we still do pro bono work? Or how can we still find a, a, a micro business package that we created, right? Specifically for the micro business that's just starting out. They're not going to have a ton of right. transactions. You know, how do we keep showing up for them, but also know that, that we have to generate revenue too, because otherwise you're not holding someone else accountable, right? And then it becomes like, I'm going to text you, call you, email you <laughs> whenever because I feel like I can, right? And we didn't establish those boundaries and some of those right, things. Right, right, right. Trying to do a little bit better job on some of those things, so for sure. Yeah. And I'm going to sell her later for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have to admit that I hate all of this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I do too. I'm great at a lot of things in my business. It is a nice Keeping idea. the numbers is not yeah. one of them. Mm-hmm. Never been one of them. I created, a, I owned a school back in the day. Oh. And so I had an accountant who did great with that stuff. Chairs and supplies and all of the money that was coming in, the money that was going out. And I've kept him now with the Carmel Soap Company. Oh, nice. Not as good of a fit because the business is so different. Yeah. So we are in a place now where it's not working so well and I've had to call Robert and lean on mm-hmm. him quite heavily at times I have no idea what's going quick but I don't want to do any of this stuff I don't I don't know any what do I have to go through I'm a I'm old school I'm, I have paper receipts everywhere so I'm like I have to go through the paper receipt and put these in the quick I'm not doing any of that so I am definitely in a place where this year I've taken a step back on branding 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 being everywhere doing everything and getting back in that back office and really getting back to the management of the business. I threw everything out there so, so big and so quickly at the beginning that it's taken me years and years because I didn't do all of that planning and all of that ahead of time. Now I've had to do that much, much later on. So now five years in, I'm still trying to figure out, okay, what did I make last year? What did I make this month? What do I have to pay out? What do I, 
So I'm, it, it's the thing that I'm worse at. Yeah. So I, I definitely have uh, leaned on Robert. A, a one of the of things times. that I'll say, and I appreciate that, one of the things that I'll say, she's also a neighbor, right? So I'm always, I'm like, hey, just give me a call, let's talk. She's always you know, the door. Throw me, me. Throw me some bath salts. I like, you know, I'm good. I'm, yeah. You know, after a long day of all them calling me, I need to rest Hey, I saw bit. that pointing right at me, okay? Yeah, so, so I, one of the things that, that I think we really try to work through, right? And, and it's a it's progress because everybody's so unique. Everybody's challenges are so different. Everybody understands something different. Everybody can you research something a little different, right? And understand some people are just like, I just don't like it, don't hate it, whatever you want to charge me, charge me. I just don't want anything to do with this. Right. And I'm like, well, no, because that's not how I work. <laughs> yes, you can just pay me whatever you want. Right? <laughs> um, but no, because I, you, you need to understand, right? Because otherwise rely and, and you, you know, rely on somebody that didn't show up for you. Right. But you also didn't challenge them. You didn't know what to ask. I had a conversation. I'm also part of Helm Accelerator. Right. So I was I had a conversation with one of the participants and they're like, so so I hear you all talking. Should my should my person that I'm working with do all those things for me? And I'm like, well, wait, I, I don't know yeah. what you're doing. But what are you asking them? Yeah. Well, I'm not. Right. And that's one of them. And so one of the things that we're trying to work on is, is putting some things. To, it's like informational guide to say, here's here's what it look, should look like. It's not scary, you know what I mean. Once I, I know it sounds scary because we're we're brand new to these concepts, right? Or these terminologies a little bit different, but it's not scary when we can try to bucket them in a way, in a procedural way, the same way that you started your business, the same way that you started to create your inventory and put it up there and do those counts and things, right? And process, you know, put that process and workflow in place. That's what we're trying to do, yeah. so that it's not scary, right? So that you can show up open minded, right? Less fearful, right? Because we do want you to understand numbers are important, right? She said it. You know, these, you know, this is my demographic on Instagram. This is where I'm getting my, my income from, my revenues. Do you know, are you spending a lot of time making, you know, one of those soaps products that aren't selling, but right. you, you love it? Yeah, right. Right, that's a waste of time and money. Yeah. You can still do it seasonally. You can still do it for yourself. But we don't know that because we just know what comes in and what goes out. Mm -hmm. But we're not looking at it at that product level. But not everybody's ready for that either, right? It does take some time to sort of get there and get to those for progressions. And, and that's always been our focus is let's get everybody started. Let's get everybody working there. And then as we grow, what can we do to really help people then scale, right? And how can we show up for them there? One of the last questions that I think is, is most important for me because we struggle with it. I struggle with this, right? You know, the support system, like our journey in this whole thing. I think a lot of times I've had people reach out to me and they're like, man, I love what you're doing. You know what I mean? You're killing, you're doing these things. I'm like, I don't feel like that. I don't always feel like that. You know what I mean? I, I, I feel like... I could do so much more if I had and, and, you know, mind wanders, you know, and then we look here and we're like, well, it's us and it's the kids and it's doing all these things and we're needing to we have so much going on. Like today is an extremely busy day. I have my class tomorrow and I have a class on two, Saturday as well, too. And it's like, where did all this catch up to me? You know, and, and being able to lean on whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's other business owners, right, whatever it is, is important. And I don't think we talk about that enough. We talk about it in a certain context, but I don't think we talk about it in the truth that we are moms, we are parents, we're brothers, sisters, you know, we are entrepreneurs, right? And we have a bunch of things that go on. Um, so I just wanted to just share, like, what is your support system? You know, has it always been there? What did you have to do to help create that and have those conversations sometimes, you know, with, with those family members of say, hey, mom, dad, I need your help a little bit more because we're moving in a different area, right? Or a different way at this right. point. Uh, so my support system is with my husband. Yeah. Um, he doesn't realize how much I do because he's at work. Um, <laughs> That's not all Isn't men. Isn't that always <laughs> That's not case? all men. That's not all men. I, I knew, knew we were going to go there. <laughs> However, he supported my crazy idea that I was going to start a painting business. And in my mind, it was so that I could still be everything I was. Mom... Mm -hmm. A house accountant, the, the make, I'm the cleaning lady, I'm, I do it all. Mm -hmm. But I could also have something for me, which I hadn't had in like seven years. It yeah. really meant so much for me to start the business. Regardless of how small it was, it gave me a passion and it gave me a purpose yeah. outside of maintaining a household. And the household is important, for so sure. definitely not knocking that. Yeah. Um, but I've done it for seven years, and I was ready to start something else. Um, so he's been very supportive. He, you know, has supported me along all, all along it, but the more he's gotten involved in the business and the more he's been around, he's like, oh, my gosh, you are, like, if I'm not 
focused on a kid, I am focused on the business. Mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. I do a, a little bit of social media here. I do the, the accounting here. Um, like I feel like I'm always doing something. Because um, if I'm not, then I get behind. Um, but it also gives me the balance. So support system, my husband's been huge. Um, once I met um, Sorrel Peterson, the designer I do a lot of work for, she's been great as far as um, just the, ref- the referrals, the repeated work that she keeps giving me. Um, I've got another friend who actually is the realtor that we use when we got here. She's got so many contacts. And so she's been huge in getting me started um, and out there. Um, you <laughs> took a huge weight off my shoulders. Um, once I knew I had somebody I could trust backing me find- with analyzing the financials um, and teaching me things to look for as we grow. Um, occasionally the mother-in-law came and held babysit when I couldn't find babysitters because um, that we really struggled with over the summer. Um, so I'll say this. One of the things I hear you say is like, so you're looking at the business and I just want to be clear, right? You know what I mean? To, to y'all and to the audience as well too. I mean, for me, right, I, I, I never really did a great job networking. Like, I do know a lot of people, but I can't say that they're the person that I can go to and say, mm-hmm. man, I'm just, I'm, I'm dying inside right now. Like, I just, I need that, right? I don't know if I have that person aside from Lily. You know, those are the things that I think, uh, your husband is always great, right? But that's a one person, because I even have these conversations with mm-hmm. her. She's in LLI, you know, which is the Latin Leadership Institute, right? So I'm like, there's only so much I can tell you. You're going to have to go to someone else that's going to be able to tell you and relate to you in a very different way that, that I can. And and so is it church? Is it is it, you know, mom groups? Is it Facebook support groups? Is it those things? I think those are really, really important, even with the successes that we're having. Because with success, there's a lot of challenges, right? We're growing, we're scaling, we're building a team. With failures, well, how do I get business? And how do I do these things? And how do I keep my passion? And how do I not fail? And I'm a failure. And those things... Do you have that right now or outside of my husband? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, no really and don't. that's okay. Um, however, kids just started going to school, which has freed up hey. time. Mm-hmm. Yay. I've actually <laughs> yesterday I had lunch with a friend and was able to talk awesome. business awesome. life. And that's not been an option for me for the last seven years. Yeah. Yeah. This morning I went to breakfast with mm-hmm. a friend and her husband. And they blew my mind this morning. Just Mm -hmm. ideas of how to handle things, how to grow things. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? What can we do to help you? Perfect. So I haven't had it in the past, but I think it's coming. And part of the coming is because I now don't have to try and find a babysitter to be able to go do those things. So I'm at a different, I'm entering a different stage of life, which is going to, allow me to continue to grow the, sure. the business and networking yeah, better. Yeah, put yourself out there and have um, those conversations. So, I mean, yesterday I, I went and spoke to a new cabinet shop. Um, and was able, But again, I'm able to do those now. Mm-hmm. And I've, that's not been an option in the past. Yeah. So it's really exciting on that part, getting to the new yeah. stage of life where I can, I feel. But it was also nice that I grew the way I did because it, it was very gradual. Um, and now I'm booked out for the next two months. Um, you have two, right? I have three. You have three. Okay. I have, yeah, they're five, six, and seven. <laughs> so, yeah. You're we're right there, too, then. Yeah. Yeah. So we're busy. Um, but, again, it's, we've been able to maintain the family and slowly grew the business. But its progression has been perfect for me. Perfect. Um, That's awesome. So... So, I mean, it's, it's fitting in, and I think that's part of these stories, yeah. right, is that everybody is a little unique, right? Some come with a lot of support. Some yeah. parents were previous CPA <laughs> accountants, and so they just jumped right into the business, or they had contacts, and some had no idea. And I think that's okay, right? It's just rec- the recognition of those things, understanding where you are, what you need at that point, because you may not need what somebody else might need, right, which is a mm-hmm. full team of people. Sometimes you do, right? And and now that's okay. And so, you know, as we hear from, you know, Janelle and Tara, I mean, I think we're going to hear different stories, right, from different people because our journeys <laughs> are all, so different. all very different, yeah. Um, man, I have a lot of support. And I'm kind of like, I, I feel really guilty sometimes because I feel like, why are all these people, like, believing in me? You know, like, <laughs> why are they helping me so much? Um, but 
I'd start, obviously, with my husband. He's been my number one supporter. From the beginning, he's the one who encouraged me to do what I'm doing, um, which was super shocking because when we got married, he said, you're going to be a stay-at-home mom. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's not me. I'm a <laughs> career woman. Like, I can't do that. And I, you know, I ended up doing it. I loved doing it. Mm-hmm. But I knew part of me was always going to have that little passion I wanted to work. Um, but so he's just been um, amazing. He helps me with a lot of, you know, my breakdowns in the middle mm-hmm. of the night when I'm like, I'm exhausted. I'm, you know, I've had a little bit less of them. Um, on the exhaustion part because I've hired someone, which has been amazing, but now it's going into the emotional exhaustion of being on social media so much and not being getting to see those things with my kids or whatever. So just the emotional support, my husband's been able to be there for sure. And then obviously my mother-in-law is an angel and my parents who watch our kids like all the time mm-hmm. so I can go do these events to keep my business running. Um, and then church, of course, is huge for us. Um, it's an outlet that we get to be with other believers. We get to be in church. We get to kind of let our guards down. We get to pray with other people. We get to, I mean, it's so huge for our family that we're committed. And, you know, COVID really, that was hard. (laughs) That was hard because it took that away from us. Um, We still watched online, but it's not the, you know, it's not the same. And so um, just making sure that's a priority in our household just so that we can have that, um, just that time to, like, just rebuild our, or I don't know what you want to call it, but um, mental fortitude, strength, every, yeah, yeah, everything. Just I mean, it just completely clears your mental state of your life. I mean, where you're at in life and everything. So that has been huge. Um, and then my friends. I have a really good group of girls that my husband. So this is really funny. My husband. Um, he gets to go on like dove hunts and all these things, go out to eat all the time to these places. It's like, I just went to a steakhouse for lunch. I'm like, I had crackers and cheese. I'm so happy for you. But you know what? Like I, he's been so, uh, this is the also support part. He's like, you need to go on a girl's night once, either once a month or once every two, because I need that. I also don't have any girls. I need an invite. (laughs) Yeah, we can start it. Small business, night out. Um, and, and it's 100% deductible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I just found the diet for yeah. and I'm like, uh, Everything's deductible. We won't go into that. But um, that has been a huge thing. I w- I'm not a big, I'm actually kind of a homebody when it past 8 p.m. I'm like really old. Mm-hmm. I'm so old. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm totally to go to bed. Mm-hmm. And most of my friends are not. And they're like, get your booty out here. We are, we're just going to go have dinner. Hang out for an hour. Wait till your kids are asleep. That mm-hmm. is the main goal. <laughs> Make that man put them down for bed. And then go home and get in bed at 9 p.m. Like, yep. done. And it totally refreshes me mm-hmm. for the next day. Otherwise, I'm home all the time, or which is great, whatever. But I have to have a little outlet of whether it's girl time or like, I have to go get a pedicure. Adult conversations. Maybe, maybe a pedicure. I used to get them all the time, but I don't have time mm-hmm. to do that. And I don't want to use my time when my kids are gone. I want to use it to work. Mm-hmm. But every now and then, I'm like, I need to go do something for myself. Because it helps me not think about business. And then it rejuvenates me. Yeah. And then I get passionate and I want to work harder. Right. It's the weirdest thing. But mm-hmm. that's just my, my deal. So Love it. I it's love all it. over the place, but... No, it's a strong support system and everybody's a little bit different, you know what I mean? And I think that that's important. And I think people also have to see, you know, this is probably another topic like how, right? Because sometimes we have to ask. Sometimes we have to ask. Like, you know, I don't, I like, I don't have like my mom, you know what I mean? But sometimes I've got to go, hey, I I need your help. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're just not, it's not in her to say, hey, I'm going to be there. What do y'all need from us? Yeah. And we have friends like that, right? We have, we have people in our circle that they think that oh, you've got it all figured out because I don't see cracks. Yep. And you got to say, hey, <laughs> I need you to take me out. I, yeah. I need you to show up. I, I need something from you. So, yeah. you know, building the how around yeah. bringing those things together and having those conversations I think is really important. But having those 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 support groups I think is really important too. And, and you have a lot. You shouldn't feel guilty. That's your life. Yeah, those are the right. things that are that are in your life. And I think, you know, it's okay 
and people have to understand that it's okay and and you're flourishing your give back through the community through church and those things is what's important right and i tell people this all the time i'm a big believer in karma so when we get when something had good happens to us i'm like i, I gotta give somebody i gotta have a conversation with somebody I'm like who's who wants a 30 minute consultation like because i just feel like we need yeah. to show up or some something good happened to us we have a lot we're blessed yeah. we need to give too and i think that's important when we when we talk to people it's like are we giving back also and if we are then you're doing everything that, that you should be doing. You know what I mean? And that's fantastic. And, and you're a really good example of, you know, what you want to be and what you should should be, you know what I mean? And, and what you're trying to do and, you know, wish all the best of success, you know, going forward as well too. So my support system is minimal and it's all my fault, right? <laughs> so what you said, the ask, yeah. I don't ask. Yeah. Super yeah. independent, super strong, fairly introverted. My husband is my support system. He's super cool 98% of the time. Yeah. But that's it, right? So I don't act, I don't let people in. I don't say, hey, I'm about to crack. Like you said, people say, oh, you, everything looks so great. You look great. The business doing great. Well, no, because I literally Dying. had a yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in bed for two days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those, those are scheduled posts. Those are scheduled posts. Right. You, know I mean? right. <laughs> you know, dealing with the family, dealing with the all the responsibility that comes with doing all those little things we talked about. I don't have a support system and I can honestly say I don't have enough of a support system because I don't ask I don't let people in I don't say hey Lily I'm about to crack better come get me yeah, we, <laughs> we, we've had to knock on your door a couple times yeah. we were like hey we but, need to meet up with Tara because we've had we met yes, here before early yes. on I was like I love what she's doing yeah, let's just yeah. talk it was yeah. no it was no here's what I can do for you yeah, it was like yeah, please yeah. talk and she's like because we brought up like we were talking about social media I was like girl you need to get on YouTube yeah, yeah, and yeah, start yeah, sharing yeah, things yeah. and she's like no I know I do I know I do and but that that's what we need. We, I think our biggest resource is other small business owners that know exactly what, what we're dealing through. with, yeah. right? A husband's great. A wife is great. Your mom's great, right? I don't have any of that. We don't have aunts and uncles and grandmothers. We, and have we no don't family have family here either, that, right? Yeah. So it's just me and my husband here. So I really do need that small business consortium to be able to lean on and to be able to give back. I want to be able to sew into that group. You know, which is why our, my relationship with Robert and Lily is super important. I'm a couple streets down. I contemplated walking down here <laughs> this morning. I was like, oh, I can get my walk. No, it's, it's too hot. I'm <laughs> but anyway, no, but it's minimal and it's 90% my own fault. So I know it's something that I need to work on. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I get like that too. Um, you know, there's a lot of things because I, so, so I put myself in, in kind of an awkward position because one of it is, I, I ask people to come to me as the expert in a lot of things, right? And so the numbers and taxes, yes, that's that's my thing. Sure, it's my education, that's my experience. But then we also share so much more. Like we share the mentoring and the coaching, right? Again, we've had to reflect over this last year, right, that we jumped into this thing and said, well, what do we do for people? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of QuickBooks accounting. Like that's, eh. Hey, that's you a know? lot. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm like, but yeah. But then I talk to you, I'm like, and then I talk to you after your tax return, and I'm telling you about the numbers, and I'm telling you why, and then I'm telling you, I'm asking you about where you're trying to go from here, and I'm like, all that's mentoring and coaching, all of that is is about you and your business, right? And I'm and then I'm sharing with you, like, hey, do surveys, hey, do this, how come you know what we're doing? We're learning this platform, mm -hmm. you know what? Talk to Lily about this, because because like that's what we care about, and that's what we need. But we ask people to come to us for those things, and we give people all those things, right? But then I don't go back and I don't ask anyone else right, for things, mm -hmm. right? I don't ask for people like, okay, because I'm supposed people. to have all the answers and it's hard for me, especially as a male, you know, to go out there and be like, hey, I'm, I don't know, right? Or I messed something up or something, you know what I mean? And, and that's one of the things that I've been trying to do better job on posting on social media and saying, hey, be vulnerable, mental health is important, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. y you know, being the sole bread owner, right? Or, you know, the business owner now, it's like, why well, can't fail? I'm mm -hmm. my, whole, my, my whole family. And I, and I think we, we struggle with that because again, you're the CPA. You have all the answers. People come to you for you. When they're breaking down, they call me, right? When they're having career issues, they call me. And I don't I don't go and do that as often. You know what I mean? And so, but also, I, like you, I, I haven't shown up that way or I haven't asked that of some of my friends or I haven't asked that of other people or I haven't really worked to build some of those that I'm doing now, right? I'm trying to read and look at some things in a very different way. Um, so I, I, I love the honesty, right? I love, I love the authenticity in, in these conversations today. 
And I know we can go on and on and on, um, but we do want to make sure that we have something that we can is consumable, right, right. for people. Um, and hopefully, you know, if you all have ideas, if there's things or topics that we might want to share, you know, another time, we want to bring anybody else back. If anybody else wants to join or, or just, again, just share something different uh, on a different note, not finance and accounting, <laughs> um, happy to. I will say that I, I do appreciate all the value that we got out of today. I think there's a lot of people that are going to relate to each one of you, if not all of you. Um, and I think it's an impact. I think it's that ripple. And I think these are the things, and you said it, these are the things that we need a little bit more of, right? We do things so so independently at times, even with a support system, and we run in these lanes. And I think it's important to be able to have other access to other resources and, and, and things like that. Um, I do want to give a shout out to my man Elliot over Woo! here, where grinding never stops. We got a whole production set up. <laughs> yeah. So he does uh, the podcast production. So if you guys are looking for anything like that, um, hit him up or on Instagram. We'll also share everybody else's Instagrams uh, once we put this out there in the comment section and stuff so that you can follow these young ladies over here and all the good things that they're doing. Um, and again, if you're looking for a CPA guy, we'd love to be your CPA guy. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>